we're actually relying on you because we want to get the word out. We're, we're techies and we get hurt when other people accounts get hacked. That's, that's a bad thing. That allows bad things to happen on the internet. So if you are a techie and you're watching this right now, even if you're saying, wow, this is the easiest thing ever, take the time to maybe recommend this to one of your relatives or one of your friends who doesn't turn on two-factor authentication so they can see how easy it is. Let's, let's go ahead and jump in. Alex, if you, if you go to my screen right now, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google. I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. This is a, this is a clean account. Uh, I'm going to use an account that I've set up for the past for know-how. Uh, it's creatively known as <laughs> Own Me KH. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, you can go ahead and own this. I, I keep nothing in it and I change the passwords. But if, if you could catch me before this actually airs, then... That's pretty impressive. Though. Good on you. Yeah. Good on you. So I'm going to go ahead and log in on this one. And what it's going to allow me to do is I can now go into my account. So if I click that little icon in the upper right-hand corner and go here, it's going to bring up a menu. And in the menu is Sign In and Security. Now, what you want to do is click on this one that says signing into Google. There you go. And this is now going to allow me to change my settings. So right now, two-step verification or two-factor authentication is turned off. We're going to turn that on. But first, uh, here's a lesson we learned from our good friend, Jason Howell. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do this, yes. before you do it, you need to make sure that your recovery email and your recovery phone are actually usable. Uh, what Jason did is... <laughs> His, his uh, recovery phone was actually a Google Voice number. Right. So when he turned on two-factor authentication, it sent the verification to his Google Voice number. But you but have to be signed in to get access, access to it. He couldn't access his Google Voice. <laughs> so don't, don't do that. Make sure it's actually going to some place where you can get it. Also, it was an incredible like security catch-22. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. But I mean, I, yeah, just don't, don't forward it to a Google, a Google thing. When yeah. you turn on two-factor authentication, it's going to affect everything that runs through Google's authentication service. So... If it's a Google service, you're going to need the verification in order to get in. Make sure that the verification isn't going there. Yep. Does it make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay. So I got my recovery email. It's going to own me at the techstop.net. Um, the recovery phone, I that's a little different. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go into two-step verification. And uh, this is, it's going to give you the quick get started. And yes, it's adding an extra layer of security. It's going to have you log in a couple of times. Thankfully, I have mine saved in. Now, I don't care if you use this because this is a burner phone, folks. But I'm, I'm going to 707-790-7866. I thought and you were going to have me blur this out. No, I just, <laughs> no. I, I'm sorry for whoever gets this number after I'm done with it. <laughs> really sorry. But, but bro, you got to admit for, from, from our perspective, it's pretty funny. It's for the sacrifice of knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you on behalf of science. Thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> for science and security. So that's the number I'm going to be uh, sending it to. Now, this is going to make sure that it actually works. So, uh, Alex, if you go to my phone, it's, I've already received a, oh, I've already received a verification. Oh, i got to turn that turn way down. Turn down that brightness. <laughs> Greasy fingers. There we go. Okay, so... I've received a Google verification code and it's 243748. I'm okay with showing you that because that's going to change every time. That's not yeah. a static number. Yeah. That's every time you sign out or sign in, right? Precisely. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to enter 243748. And there we go. All right. So now I get the option to turn on and boom. Everything that is connected to my Google authentication services will now require me to verify through that second factor. So in other words, if I want to log into a groups, a uh, Google groups, if I want to log into, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Google plus, if I want to mm -hmm. log into YouTube, if I want to log into, uh, what, do they still Google calendar, Google hangouts, calendar. Yeah. any yeah. of that is gone, but Google photos. Precisely. Yeah. Now here's the thing. It, after you log in the first time and you've authenticated that as a trusted device, you won't have to do it again. Right. Because it'll recognize your laptop or your phone or Precisely. Chromebook or whatever. I think whatever. you can do, you tell it, remember this device for 30 days. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll yeah. expire. Because yeah. you do want it to eventually expire. And actually, I'm going to show you a, a way to, to expire that on a regular basis. Because what, like, for example, every time I go to a conference, mm -hmm. the first thing I do when we finish and I get back to my hotel room or my house, I delete all trusted devices. Yeah. It's just, it's, you know, you just get, get used to cycling everything out because eventually that pile of trusted devices gets a lot bigger than you want it to be. Yes. Okay. So two-factor authentication is turned down, turned off, uh, turned on now, which means I'm going to need that verification of this phone every time I want to log in. Now, here's the question I always get from people who are worried about turning on multi-factor authentication, which is, well, what happens if I lose my phone? Or what happens if I'm out of connection? I, I can't get a signal. Then Does that mean I'm locked out? 
Not necessarily. There's some wonderful options here that you can play with. Now, the first one we want to play with is backup codes. You're going to like this one. So backup codes, what it allows me to do is to actually set up these unique random generated numbers. I can print them or I can save them to a device. There's 10. Every time I click this button, these will always work, but they'll work once. So uh, like I they're can- They're burner codes. They're, they're burner, burner codes. codes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're burner codes. Now, here's the cool thing. If I hit get new codes- it deletes the old set. Huh. So let's say I lose my set of burner codes. They can't do anything unless they also have my username and password, but I can, I can always do this, and suddenly those codes are invalid. Wow. So that's why I have no problem showing this to the audience because I'm going to do this again right after we're done. None of these, these numbers will be valid. But the cool thing is I can have either like on a USB drive or I could have in a printout in my wallet or right. printout in my shoe, wherever I'm going to hide it, and I will always have a way to verify even if I lose my phone or don't have connectivity. Yeah, just don't get it tattooed on your arm or something like that. <laughs> Unless you have a way to like delete. <laughs> Black it out when you're done with them. Yeah. <laughs> just, just all the way up and down your arm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely use the backup codes. It's it's one of the coolest features. And uh, I actually, I'm, I'm glad they implemented that because I don't think... Uh, Facebook does that. They don't have burner codes. No, unfortunately so. not. Yeah. Uh, there is another thing here. This works on both uh, I iOS and on Android. It's the Authenticator app. So you can download an app for your phone. I have mine right here, uh, Authenticator. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to, to, even if the phone is offline, so it has no connectivity, it will still, because it has all of my hashes, hmm. it will be able to generate a unique code for me to log in. Uh, that's that's something else that you can turn on. You, I don't use that as often as I do like the burner codes. The burner codes are still number one for me. I, I am now installing that because I did go. not have that yeah, before. Yeah, that, that app is really, really great. Yeah, and remember, it works even if you're offline. So yep. it, you don't have to have any connectivity whatsoever. It just knows because it has your hash, it knows what the next one in the sequence should be. Uh, backup phone, that's self-explanatory. If, if you lose your phone, you can actually have it send your verification to another phone. And this is a great thing if you're using a Google Voice number, but right. then you have an actual phone, the Google Voice just forwards things on. Mm -hmm. This is the place to, to put either that, that second phone number or whatever it may be. Yeah, uh, one thing, I uh, don't forward to a phone you don't secure. <laughs> uh, I think that should be self-explanatory, but evidently it was Good not. Good to say. Uh, no, why? no, it's, 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 you know, there are no stupid questions here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, you should definitely throw that out. My, my, uh, my dad was forwarding his backup phone to my mom's phone. I'm like, you know, Ooh. that's no longer safe then, right? <laughs> 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 uh, just, just say What's it, the problem, Bobby? Mom's phone's not locked at all. Anyone can pick it up. And, uh, mm. Never mind. All right. And uh, this one I really like, add security key. So what I can do is I can create a dongle. It's an encrypted dongle. So it's not like someone can copy the data off. Mm -hmm. but it stores a hash on that key. And when I authenticate, it's going to check for it. Oh, cool. Which, Where do you get the key? Uh, it's just a USB drive. Yeah, just, you can you oh. can buy them on Amazon. Yep. They're like eight bucks. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, if Amazon supported two-factor, maybe I'd get one. <laughs> Precisely, right? <laughs> right. Uh, it's kind of sad. <laughs> and then the last bit that you're going to want to know is this, devices you trust. So every time I log in with an authenticator, because it doesn't want to annoy me, it's going to say, okay, this, this laptop is now trusted mm -hmm. for that account. This phone is now trusted for that account. Right. Uh, we've all been in a place where we've logged in on a computer that's not ours. Yeah. Uh, and you may have forgotten to log back out. Well, you don't have to. If you hit revoke all, what this will do is it will wipe everything. So everything is now considered an untrusted device and it will require the authentication once again. Which, by the way, anytime I, I find suspicious activity, this is, I'll do this mm -hmm. and I won't log in and I'll just wait. If a verification request shows up on my phone, I know someone else has my credentials. Uh, okay. And then what do you do from there? And I just change the username change and the password yeah. or change the password. So they, they don't even have that part. Well, so we've talked about the two-factor authentication, but this is all with the idea too that you might be using a password manager to like yeah. long passwords, different password for every site that you go to. And then even if your password manager gets owned, the password that is used for your Google account, you still have to have your phone. They would have to have your phone your password and the access to your password manager yeah. and, and access to get into your phone because your yep. phone's going to be secured right. too yep. right so we're talking layers of security yeah and, and this is not bulletproof by any means because i can intercept text messages i have the equipment to do that at home right especially if i can do something like downgrade them to uh, you know a 2g connection are you talking about a stingray that maybe yeah, the maybe a little stinger yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, if i can do that then then scraping off the text messages is trivial yeah. But 
you're not trying to have bulletproof security. You're trying to have security that's high enough that people go, that's eh, not worth it. Yeah, I'll you don't want to be the little low-hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. That, that we, that's what we should call this. This episode is sponsored by low-hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it, every episode. <laughs>